Hello! Welcome to new scene anatomy video. Today it's finally the day for a first look at the neutron synthesizer by Behringer. The neutron is a paraphonic synthesizer with a semi-modular engine. Semi-modular means here you can take the modulus out of the system, but you can enroute audio and CV or gates out of the system to your modular system like a uh, Eurorack and then patch it um, for creating even more stuff with it. So it's semi-modular, so it's fixed inside a voice, but you can take it out. So this is semi-modular. And let's look at the neutron here. You have here two oscillators. Left and right side is as always the same here. You have five different waveforms. And um, for each oscillator you have here the tuning. Uh, tuning and you have an oscillator mix. Unfortunately, there is not a mixer inside, but here is an oscillator mix, so you can mix the both oscillators together. I prefer if you have one knob for the oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, so for me it's a bit better for making this, but this is also fine. And let's look here, you have um, a sine wave. I take here the right side. That sine wave. Then we have triangle wave. Then we have saw. Then we have pulse. And we have a tone mod. And as you can see, the oscillators are here the same, so there are no difference. And each oscillator comes here with an uh, oct 8 octave, 16 octave, 32. And there's also another one. If you go here from range, then you have all the three lights here on. Then you have in a special range, then you have plus minus 10 octaves. That's quite interesting to make FM, for example. Um, then you have here also for each oscillator um, a pulse width modulation knob. This works here with the, uh, with, the, with the triangle and with the tone mod. Let's do this. And you have tone mode. You can see there's a lot of possibilities here also already with the pulse wave or with the tone mod. And there is also a paraphonic feature here.
And what is cool here compared to all oscillators, um, no, um, now you can step here through the different oscillators, um, different waveforms, but it's also possible to modulate them. So if you take here, for example, in the patch bay um, for oscillator 1 or oscillator 2 now, because we have a mix, you take here the shape. And we go here inside the uh, LFO. So we can modulate them now. But here is also an, a different feature inside. If you uh, press long on the range then the key track uh, button here lights then you have in the morphing feature so um, the waveforms uh, morph better through the different uh, waveforms here long pressing and it's in a normal mode and it's quite cool because I used it a lot already for making some sounds uh, making this animation here on the waveforms and this gives you a lot of different features sure what is also here cool you have the um, on the oscillator side you have also in the patch bay you can go out the patch bay here oscillator 1 oscillator 2 inputs here CV inputs into patch bay but you have also outputs for oscillator 1 and 2 and for oscillator mix and you have also an in for the pitch of the oscillator 1 and 2 so you have pitch for oscillator 1 and 2 or um, you can take two different pitches next example I want to demonstrate to you that it's also possible to work here with FM you can have FM between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 and create very interesting sounds also with here with the oscillator sync. Next we have here the filter section and the Beringer team engineered here a new filter with the name Morphat. It doesn't sound like a, a Moog ladder filter and it's a very unique filter. You have here a low pass filter also, then you have here a band pass and a high pass. And you have here the cutoff, the resonance, you have here key track for the cutoff, then you have here a mode def, mode def and this goes to the LFO. And you have here 
the envelope dev and this goes directly to the envelope 2 which is hardwired to the filter. So let's start here maybe with some filter tricks. As you can hear the filter sounds very lovely and it doesn't lose on amplitude like a Moog ladder filter and so you can create very big fat bass sounds for example or even more. The filter is also very versatile on the patch bay. You have here a filter 1 output but you have also a filter 2 output that allows you to route out two different filters. Uh, for example if you take here the low pass filter you take here a low pass out of this filter 1. You get on to second filter 2 output and high pass filter. If you take here, for example, band pass filter, you get low pass filter output on filter 2. And if you take here high pass filter, you get a band pass filter. And a cool feature, and uh, you, you must this know from the manual, if you sum up the VCA1, for example, in the low pass filter, and uh, a different type on VCO2 and you go in the sum input here you can create a uh, fourth different filter mode so you can create here a notch filter so let's do this let's take here the VCF output and we go here in the sum in and we go the next one the filter to in sum 1b and we take the sum output and we go this one to the VCA. Now we have created a notch filter with the patch bay. So listen to our DIY notch filter.
you have heard now the notch filter which you created with the patch bay and you see it's very versatile to use uh, the filter section with the patch bay and you can also root out for example the filter 1 and filter 2 to your UREC system and use it not uh, with this system but with different modules. Then you have also a noise generator here. Then you have also here a noise generator. Then you have here the VCR bias. This opens the VCA and close it. And um, it's maybe a bit earlier to talk, uh, talk about the VCA, but you have here on the right side also the different inputs and outputs for the VCA. You have here VCA in, a VCA CV input, and you have here also VCA output. Next to the Mofat filter, you have also an LFO with five different shapes, an LFO rate, and a keysync. What is a bit different than in normal analog synthesizers or classic synthesizers, you can also blend in the LFO mode the waveforms. Just press longer in the range here. Then you are in the blending mode. So you can blend waveforms also in the LFO. This means if you change now a wave a waveform from one to other, it longer steps, but it blends. So it's very smooth and it's very interesting if you modulate them with an LFO or with a different uh, modulation type here. Then as I said, the LFO is routed directly to the filter, but this can be changed in the, in the matrix here. In the patch bay, for example, you can change, go here from the LFO output to the resonance. So you changed already the LFO routing, but um, as I said, it's only one LFO so this LFO can be also multiplied. For example, we go here now to, to an LFO output to multiply. Then you have two outputs for, for more modulations. And so you have one output, for example, for the resonance and one output for the pulse width modulation, but you use still one LFO. And it's quite cool in my opinion to, to see that they implement here a multiplier so you can use more than one LFO. And if you want to use this signal in a different way, for example, you can also route the multiplier here, one multiplier to the inverter, then you have one LFO signal which is inverted and the second one is still the normal one and so you can create quite interesting LFO uh, modulations on two different parameters. Then you have also here, an, as I said, LFO output, an LFO uni output, and in the inside you can modulate here the LFO rate. Quite interesting, if you want to create very crazy stuff, then you can also um, sh the LFO shape modulation. And what I said, if you are in the blending mode and then modulate the shape, you can create very smooth and interesting new sounds with it. And you can also trigger the LFO with an external input. Then we have here two envelopes with an ADSR structure, attack, decay, sustain, release. Envelope 1 is routed directly to the VCA and envelope 2 is directly routed to the filter. But as this can be changed in the patch bay. In the patch bay, for example, you have here envelope gate 1 and gate 2 inputs and envelope 1 and 2 outputs. This allows you to patch, for example, this envelope or to two envelopes to a UREC system and use it then very uh, differently. So it's, uh, as I said, it's a semi-modular synth, so you can use here also the envelopes, not only in the neutron synth, but also as separate module. Then let's hear a bit the envelope.
As you can hear, the envelope is here very snappy and it's perfectly to creating fat and punchy bass sounds or lead sounds. Then beside the envelopes, you have also three very cool uh, utility sections here. First, you have the sample and hold with a rate knob and a glide mode for gliding the notes. Then you have here also in the patch bay a sample and hold in and a, a clock in for the sample and hold. But you have also a sample and hold output here. Then you have here a slew rate limiter. The slew rate limiter limits the rate of change of the input signal. And uh, beside this you have also portamento. So you can um, add portamento to your sounds with the portamento time. And in the patch bay you have here the slew in and slew out. And then you have also two attenuators. So you can attenuate your signal. What is very clever if you want to make, for example, a performance and want to limit your LFO or I use it a lot also for the FM to limit a bit the FM so you can here uh, add more FM to it or less. So very inc interesting free utility features here that adds a lot of the modularity to the synth. Last but not least we have here an effect section with a delay and overdrive. The delay is here based on a bucket brigade delay. So let's hear it. As you can hear, the delay is a bit noisy, but has a lot of character. So it's an interesting add-on here to the Neutron. Then you have also the overdrive, and the overdrive has here a drive, a tone. The tone uh, changes the character of the overdrive, and a level. And the level must be here activated to get sound of the Neutron. Let's add here also a bit of overdrive to it. As you can see, also this adds a very cool character to the Neutron. It must be say here that you can, for example, also modulate the delay. There is a, a delay in and a delay time. So you can modulate here the delay time. Um, I give you now also a demo on this.
Then you have here also an overdrive in and an overdrive output on the patch bay. This is the front panel of the Neutron. Let's check also the back side. On the back side, you have an audio input that goes directly to the engine. So filter, delay and overdrive. So you can put other device in the Neutron. Then you have an audio output, which is mono. Then you have phones, which is stereo. And a phone's volume parameter. Then also a configuration panel for the MIDI channels. MIDI shoe. You have also USB for firmware updates and MIDI in and MIDI out. But I got several questions and it doesn't send audio out. And finally you have also power on and off and a power supply input. You have seen now my first look video of the Neutron. And it's not yet a review, but I can say that the Neutron is a full-featured semi-modular synthesizer with a nice sound, with some unique features, a lot of sound design possibilities, and for a price of $299 or $349 Euro, it's an absolute no-brainer for modular beginners in my opinion, because you can put it in a, inside a Eurorack case and then patch out to different other modules. So it's an absolute no-brainer for beginners in my opinion. If now users of existing uh, Eurorack uh, systems need this, I don't know, but it for this price it's an absolute no-brainer. So if you buy it, it doesn't cost a lot and it adds a lot of cool features, especially because you have here also utility modules like sample hold, slew rate limiter, attenuators, and this can be also routed to your Eurorack system. So you can use it also as standalone uh, modules. So in my opinion, the Neutron is a really cool new synthesizer by Behringer. I'm looking forward to test more of the Neutron. I will release in future also more videos about the Neutron. And please leave in the comments your questions about the Neutron so you can ask them as soon as possible. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a positive thumb and a subscription for more future videos. And don't forget to be a Patreon so you get access to exclusive sound content like sample libraries, preset libraries, um, also free plugins, promo codes for iOS apps and much more. It would be very cool if you support me over Patreon. And big thanks for watching and for continued support. I hope to see you again very soon in one of my next videos. Bye!